Hello, everyone. Does anybody need a refill on beer? I see some empty beers. No? OK. So my name is Bob. Um, Ethan picked both our old logo and my old title for this, but I didn't want to correct him ahead of time just, just to call him out on the spot. But I, don't, I really don't care. So today I'm going to talk, uh, well, I'll jump to the next slide. So my plan for this evening, uh, I want to talk a bit about myself. I'm an only child, so that'll be the easiest part of, of this presentation. Uh, I want to introduce Betterment for, for those who don't know what we do, or maybe refresh, uh, refresh it for those who do. Any, any Betterment customers here? I know I spoke with at least one. Cool, so this will be a, a refresher. Um, I want to tell a story of, uh, of something that we built uh, last year going into this year, our first foray into, uh, into the world of, of cash management. Uh, and then lastly, I'll, I'll, answer, I'll, I'll answer some questions. So a bit about me. Um, I started in uh, strategy consulting, uh, advising on, on products like slurry pumps and refrigeration containers, nothing to do with technology. Uh, somehow spun an interview well enough to get into product management at Orbitz, where I own the mobile apps. We eventually got gobbled up by, by Expedia. I was in Chicago this whole time, so I threw in a, little, a nice Chicago pick. Um, and then found my way to Betterment. Uh, I threw in Booth here, maybe to impress like two of you, uh, but to uh, just highlight that's where I learned about uh, finance and efficient markets and about the, the, the shitty state of wealth management today. So at, at, at Betterment, uh, I'm a group product manager. I oversee our, our customer product team, so everything uh, post sign up or login, um, that's what, what my team is focused on. So uh, a bit about Betterment, I'll try to cover it in two slides. Um, we're essentially built on the premise that uh, traditional methods of, of wealth management suck. Um, so there's, there's really two ways that, that people can go about getting advice on their assets. There's um, are doing it themselves without advice and uh, you know, financial li literacy rates and, uh, and kind of behavioral uh, tendencies can, can lead to bad outcomes there. Um, and, and an alternative would be going to uh, see a financial advisor. Um, and uh, advisors, you know, they, they, uh, they, they can work in your best interest if you have uh, enough wealth. You know, if you have over two million, maybe, maybe you're worth their time. But, but less than that, they're, they're probably trying to, uh, trying to sell additional products to you. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of a shame what, what people are able to get away with. So enough, enough ranting. Uh, we, we brought technology in the equation, decided to bring uh, great financial advice algorithmically to people at scale uh, at, at a low cost. So how, how does Betterment work? Um, this is, is simplified, but essentially we, we try to learn, learn a bit about you uh, through the sign-up process, through onboarding. We want to understand who you are, where you are in life, what your financial goals are, uh, and what, what you want to achieve in the long term. Uh, based on that, we will create a portfolio tailored to those goals. So, you know, if you're 20 and, and looking to retire, it's going to be a, a riskier basket of, of assets um, versus if it's your, your house down payment goal in four years, you're, you're going to see more, uh, more bond ETFs in, in that portfolio. And we will, um, you know, give you advice on the contributions you need to make in order to achieve that goal, and we'll actually taper uh, the risk over time uh, as you as you reach closer to that goal, um, you know that goal termination point. We we're a product centric company, uh, so we 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 very much believe that uh, building features for our, our customers and solving their problems one at one at a time or what or what has and what will lead to our our growth. So we uh, when I left today, we're we're a little over. 17 billion uh, in assets. Uh, when I joined a year and a half ago, uh, we were just uh, ready to uh, throw our 10 billion party. So um, it's been, been tremendous growth, even despite uh, the volatility last year. Obviously, we are, we're, we're sensitive to market fluctu fluctuations. But even during that time, you can see that our that gray line, our, our deposits, which are our client contributions, uh, are always up and to the right, uh, regardless of market conditions. So as, as, a, as a product manager, the kind of the reason I'm paid is to, to answer this, this question. What, what, what do we build next? What's the next thing we can do that uh, will we'll deliver value for our customers and generate return for our business? Um, any ideas? What, what should we build? Cash management? 
Sure. So we've been looking at, at, at cash for, for a while. It's obviously uh, a portion of, of our customers' wealth that, that we were not uh, managing or involved with or advising on previously. Um, you know, it's obviously one, one of the most important variables to whether you can achieve your goals. You know, we can, we can put you in the right portfolio, but if you're not, if you're not saving enough, if you're not putting enough money in, um, you know, that's the most important variable uh, for, for your financial plan. And lastly, you know, if you put, if you put us in, in, in the shoes of a year ago, uh, volatility returned return to the market, uh, and we saw that uh, customers were depositing uh, at, a, at a lower rate into our platform, and they were uh, you know, preferring uh, less risky cash equivalent assets. And one, one of the greatest uh, assets we have as a business is that customers aggregate external accounts on our platform. Those, those customers that, that, that uh, are in the room, you can, you can sync your 401k or your, your uh, high yield savings account. And so we were able, able to observe uh, that, that customers were uh, essentially hoarding cash. Uh, you know, once the, our target customers tend to uh, make a lot more than they spend, uh, and we we're able to see them compile uh, all this cash in, in their uh, external checking accounts over time. And the problem with checking accounts is that they don't really generate a return. I spoke with someone from Bank of America or was previously at Bank of America. Um, you know, they have a 0. 0.0 something percent yield in those accounts, and we were able to observe our customers uh, you know, build up hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in, in those accounts. And so it was, it, was, it was kind of a question to explore. You know, we had this customer problem of this opportunity cost uh, for, uh, for, for the, the yield they could be generating for equivalent risk. Um, you know, there's high yield savings accounts that, that they weren't participating in. Then of course, there's a business opportunity. You know, we want to manage more of our customers' wealth and if we're able to delve into the uh, cash space, that, that's an opportunity for us. So like any, any good product manager, I kicked off uh, a research campaign. So this is an, an actual slide. Um, we, we came up with our, our, our you know, fancy executive brief. Uh, and then we, we did a bunch of qualitative uh, explorations with, with focus groups and panels. We did concept development where you know, we'd put together a paragraph to basically describing a product. And we'd uh, run that by customers, get their reactions to it, understand if that would make them more or less interested in our brand. And then lastly, did some quantitative evaluation, uh, you know, try to uh, get some statistics around um, some of the things that we might bring to market. Uh, and then came up with a recommendation. This is highlighting some of the, the, the reasons we discovered why customers were, were piling up cash. Uh, they weren't sure what else they should do with it. Um, you know, I think this room is generally well-educated, but others don't understand that they, they could be maximizing it elsewhere. Uh, there's manual effort. People, uh, people uh, don't want to log in their checking accounts every day. They don't want to uh, move it somewhere else. Maybe they do it once a year. And then lastly, access. You know, people are like, well, yeah, I have $100,000 in my checking account, but at least it means I'll never not have enough, right? Um, so these, these are the problems we, we set out to solve. Uh, so, so this is what we built, the end. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so these are the, uh, the, the three set of distinct features that we built that we've, we've bundled uh, as, as cash management at Betterment to be added to uh, in the future. So I'll briefly describe these and then go into a bit more detail. So we have cash analysis. This is analysis on your external bank account where we, we can help you understand how much money you need to fulfill your expenses over a three to five week period. We have two-way two sweep that will automate uh, extra cash out of that checking account. Um, then we have Smart Saver, that's our cash equivalent yield generating uh, portfolio in Betterment that can, uh, can you know, make sure you're making the, the most of your, your extra cash. So it started with Smart Saver. You know, if we, if we want to take on cash, we need a better, better home for it. Um, un unfortunately, we're, we're, we're not a bank. Um, and if we wanted to be a bank or partner with a bank, this would be a 20, 2020 project. Um, we're, we're powered by a broker-dealer entity. We hold security, specifically ETFs. Um, so we were able to construct a uh, portfolio of, of two ETFs, 80 for finance people in the room, 80% uh, SHIV, which is a short-term treasury uh, ETF, and 20% NEAR which is a, uh, a high-grade uh, corporate bond um, portfolio. And from a, from a customer's perspective, this is, this is something that 
uh, is in a lot of ways equivalent to a savings account. It's principal protected, uh, generates a competitive yield, um, but it has some downsides. Not F FDIC protected, uh, it's under SIPC, but a little more, little, you know, doesn't have that, that brand appeal that FDIC does. Uh, and there's settlement time associated with uh, any securities. So if, if you wanted, if you needed that cash now, um, you know, it's T plus two plus another day uh, to, to get that cash to customers, just kind of the reality of the way the system works. But regardless, um, you know, we, we could take this fight against checking accounts. You know, this, this is something that we, we showed to our customers a lot. Um, and we would actually personalize this based on the bank that, that you had your cash. So if you had Chase, we'd show you what the Chase checking account rate was. Uh, we were confident that, that the, 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 the shortcomings of our smart saver portfolio um, you know, would, would be overcome in this chart. Uh, and from a customer perspective, it looked, it looked a lot like another goal at Betterment. So you had retirement, you had, had, had smart saver. And it, it did really well, uh, independent of any of the other uh, uh, brains on top of it. I had to obfuscate the y-axis, so I guess this could be like zero to one dollar and you wouldn't know, but um, you know, I put this here just to have some sort of up and to the right chart. Um, it, 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 it exceeded our expectations. It's currently one of our most popular uh, gold types with uh, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in it. But we, we, we didn't want to stop there. You know, the problem with Smart Saver is uh, it, was, it was void of advice, and we're, we're a company centered on, uh, on, on, helping, on helping our customers understand what they should have in their goals uh, and, and how those fit into their overall financial picture. So in comes cash analysis, and this was the uh, I think most complicated piece. So you know, we wanted to be able to look at a customer's aggregated checking account and tell them what they should have in it. Um, you know, it's, a very, it's a very personal thing, uh, and we did a lot of research to try to fine-tune that, we did diary studies, you understand the, uh, the spending and saving habits of our uh, mass affluent target customer. I, I asked our investing team to summarize exactly how the cash management algorithm works. Um, so I will read it and then we can laugh. We have a heuristic model for identifying transaction frequency which mixes third-party classification data with our classification correction algorithm. Once we have identified the frequency of transaction occurrences, we estimate the likelihood that a stream of similar transactions will persist in the data. From there, we generate expected expense forecasts based on time, transaction frequency, transaction amount, and other classification features. Our money movement decision log logic updates as new transaction information becomes available. So basically we, looked at, we look at historical expenses and we project out future expenses uh, and give you a, a three to five week range. So if you look at the, uh, the chart on the right, uh, we'll, we'll show your current balance, recommended range, and the extra cash that, that, that should be doing more, uh, more for you as, as an investor. <clears throat> Another up and to the right chart. So the last piece is kind of, kind of makes sense. Um, you know, how can we take that cash analysis range and, and automate it? And I think the, the really unique thing we did here is it will work both ways. We will pull money out of our platform and the great fees that it generates for us and put it back in your checking account if you go, if you go below that range. And that satisfies that third customer concern is, you know, will, will I have enough? And, Automating is, is never easy. We went through a lot of uh, 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 iterations with this, with, with various uh, kind of alpha test groups uh, or beta test customer groups. Uh, and we found that, you know, although customers find our cash analysis credible, uh, in order for them to take the hands off, their hands off the wheel, they need to feel like they actually have control. Um, so we, we found that in order to make this successful, we need to over-communicate. So we let our customers know you know, every time, hey, we see there's extra cash. We're about to move this extra cash. This extra cash is moving. Give, give them an opportunity to cancel that, skip that, change their settings. They can uh, put in custom, uh, custom ranges if they want. Maybe we recommend, you know, you have a balance of uh, 8,500 to, 1, to 10,000, but you have a checking account that has some like minimum that you need to keep uh, for some reason. We, we, we try to handle all those cases with, with various ways of, of, of customizing. And 
this was interesting in just the PR that it generated. There's something about uh, automating finances or, or at least the kind of altruistic we're willing to put it back in a checking account that, that the press, press found, found really interesting. Um, so that was always great to see. Th those of us in here who love, love process, again, this is kind of a, a real life uh, thing. Unfortunately, I lost some of the bars, uh, but we, uh, the bars make, make the chart. Uh, but we, for, for, each, uh, for each feature, we had um, uh, internal alpha releases, we'd have beta, beta releases to customers, we'd split test them across uh, produc production with all customers uh, and would, would iterate from there. So we, you know, particularly as we're gonna automate people's finances and move money from their checking accounts, like this isn't kind of a, you know, move fast and break shit uh, uh, approach. Uh, we, we, wanted, we wanted to get it right, so we were really careful, but we did it over um, about a, you know, six month time span, which, uh, which felt good. That's my story.